So welcome to the uh, Certified Information System Security Professional course. Uh, like I said, my name is Scott Smith. I'll be your instructor this week. We are going to start by going through the first four domains of the CISSP, uh, which is part one of our um, certification. Um, let's talk about the certification itself first. As far as the experience that you need, um, it's generally recommended that uh, you have, you know, some knowledge in IT, of course, although this class is not generally, uh, doesn't require a whole lot of hands-on experience. There is a lot of information that needs to be covered in regard to technology, right? The, the eight different domains, and we'll break down those eight different domains in this introduction, will give you an idea of what, what it is that you need to know, but a basic knowledge of networking fundamentals, the open systems interconnect model, uh, network communication, et cetera, is, uh, is pretty important. It's not necessarily a, a very technical uh, certification, but it does require that you have some decent knowledge in, in networking. About five years of experience uh, in, in network uh, competency um, and, uh, you know, in two or more uh, years of experience in the different eight different domains. One of the interesting things about this particular certification is that it does cover a wide breadth of, of uh, topics, right? Very similar to something like you would see with GIAC certifications, like the, the GSEC and the GISF certifications, uh, where we talk, we talk about uh, some highly technical aspects in cryptography. We'll be talking about a lot of technical aspects from cryptographic standards. Uh, and then uh, to physical security, to uh, policy and procedure, we're going to start off the course talking, of course, a lot about policy and, and procedure. So this, uh, this course is, uh, is pretty heavily uh, engaged in a lot of different areas, and you'll see that as we kind of go through the class itself. Um, the, as far as my background goes, uh, again, my name is Scott Smith. Uh, we've already done the introductions for you guys, so we're not going to put that on the video, but I'll introduce myself. Um, I am, uh, I've been in the IT business since 1995, 94. I started uh, as a network engineer, actually as a uh, systems administrator at the College of Engineering at Texas Tech when I was attending class there. I got my degree in electrical engineering and computer science from Texas Tech um, and had a job lined up to go work as a an electrical engineer with Halliburton in Texas, and, and some folks came out from California, and they said, hey, we're looking for network engineers. Uh, at the time, and remember this was mid, mid to late 90s, there really weren't any IT quote unquote certifications or, or, or IT uh, uh, you know, programs in the university, so computer science was about as close as you could get. So. I interviewed for the job and uh, those guys came out from NASA and I got a job to go work at NASA in, in California as a network engineer um, and uh, never looked back. Stayed in IT the whole time. Went to work at Cisco for a couple years and then left uh, Cisco in 2001 and started this company. So um, as far as the interesting projects I'm involved in, well, uh, all kinds of projects, right? Uh, Think Tank is not only a, a learning institution, it's also a consulting company, and so we do a lot of implementations uh, across the board, from data center to voice over IP to security to infrastructure. Uh, we've worked with uh, the Navy. One of the more interesting projects we've done with the Navy is uh, the vessel called the SBX. Um, it's a... Uh, oil rig platform that was converted to a missile tracking system uh, to track ICBMs um, and we built the uh, infrastructure and the network on that vessel. Uh, they're currently deployed of course given this current state of the environment today but a uh, um, very interesting project. Um, certifications, uh, as you guys know I have a whole wide range of certifications. There's probably about 50 or 60 different certifications, so I won't list them all. But uh, some of the notable ones, of course, the CISSP, uh, CASP, uh, uh, Cloud Plus, 
uh, Security Plus, Network Plus, uh, all the CCNAs, all the CCMPs, a uh, couple of CCIEs. Um, interesting project I'm working on right now uh, from a security standpoint is uh, myself and another colleague were hired by Cisco to write the new CCIE security curriculum. So for the new CCIE security program coming out uh, next year. So uh, it's, uh, you know, we're heavily involved in a lot of different things. And, and uh, you know, I love teaching. I love being in the classroom. And uh, I love, of course, uh, imparting knowledge on folks and even learning. Every class I teach, I learn something new. So uh, it's, it's very interesting. Um, the uh, goals and objectives of this course, right? Uh, we break this course down into essentially eight different domains, and we can see those eight domains listed here. Domain number one, security and risk management. Uh, essentially, this is the policy domain, where we're going to talk about assessments, risk assessments, how to uh, uh, manage risk and mitigate risk in your environment, what types of controls are available to do that, and so on. We'll get into asset security. Security engineering, which is domain number three, that's a big one, right? Because security information or security engineering involves the, the, the concept of cryptography. And uh, that's one of my favorite domains to teach in this class. Uh, and we get into some pretty detailed stuff in, in that uh, domain. Communica communications and network security you'll find pretty interesting as well. Obviously, we're talking about, in that case, infrastructure, uh, security in the infrastructure. Identity and access management is uh, domain number five. Security assessment and testing, domain number six. Security operations, domain number seven. And finally, domain eight, which is software development security. So uh, they used to have 10 domains, um, but the 10 domains were kind of, they had a couple of domains that were somewhat uh, repetitive, so they've come, kind of combined and streamlined the process down to these eight domains. Uh, with regard to the exam, uh, I would say that probably domain number one and domain number two uh, and domain uh, number four are probably the most important ones with regard to the lion's share of what's going to be on the test. Uh, but you will see things from all of the domains. So it's very important that we kind of cover everything, obviously, as we get through the, the process here. As far as our schedule goes, um, we are going to try to cover, of course, domain number one and two uh, today. Uh, I would guess that we'll probably get through domain one and two. We'll see how, how well it goes. But... Uh, and then uh, day number two, we start uh, uh, or finish up domain two if we don't make it all the way through today. Uh, go through domain three. Uh, and then day three, uh, we'll hit domain number four. Um, and then we get to some of the domains that are a little bit uh, less detailed, I suppose, uh, kind of more generic in domain five, six, seven, and eight. So. We'll, we'll focus the first three days on the first four domains, and then we'll wrap up the remaining domains on the last two days of the class. This is the goal, anyway. Um, we'll see how far we can get, but that's our goal. As far as the scheduling goes for class, we start at 8.30 in the morning. Um, we will take a, a morning break, depending on how you guys feel, uh, based on what time, uh, you know, where we're at in the material and so on. We'll take a, a lunch break for an hour. Uh, lunch will be provided here, of course, for well, three people, so I guess we'll get a little extra lunch today. Um, and then we'll wrap up the day. I try to get done around 5 o'clock. If it's not 5, I try to get as close to 5 as possible. Uh, if I just have to kind of monitor where we're at uh, throughout, the, throughout the week. And we may end up going a little bit later, um, but uh, that's the general goal. Okay? That's the general goal. So what has changed? Well, you know, the, the course changed quite a bit uh, ago. I mean, it went from 10 domains to 8 domains. Uh, this is not really that new. This has been updated uh, since 2016. So uh, for those that were familiar, it used to be a 10 domain uh, course. 40% uh, of the content is new and updated. 
again 2016, but uh, or December 2016. Uh, so again, these are the domains. So what are we going to talk about in each domain? Uh, in the security and risk management domain, we're going to talk about applying security governance principles, um, which can be pretty interesting, actually. If you go through this, uh, when we go through this domain, uh, there's a lot of repetition. One of the things that you're going to have to know, of course, is uh, a lot of the standards bodies and how those standards bodies affect uh, uh, risk management in your organization. So we'll talk about that. Uh, asset security, uh, classify information and your supporting assets, meaning, you know, how do I, in order for me to be able to apply security policies and apply security uh, information assurance to assets, I need to be able to identify what those assets are and uh, how valuable those assets are to our organization. Security engineering, implementing and managing uh, engineering life cycle with security design principles. Uh, well, quite frankly, that's the cryptography chapter uh, or domain communications and network security, uh, network architectures. That's uh, obviously our sweet spot, at least mine in this particular class. So we'll be spending some time on that domain. Identify uh, our identity and access management. So this is where we get into the physical controls, uh, you know, the, the whole concept of, uh, you know, um, something you are, something you have, something you know uh, type thing, as well as physical security, a relatively simple domain, quite frankly. Uh, identity and access management, uh, uh, like I said, is just really a physical and logical access to your assets. Uh, security assessment and testing, designing and validating assessments and testing techniques. Again, a relatively simple domain. Uh, and then security operations, understanding and applying foundational security operational concepts. Day-to-day -day operations, right? Um, and then, uh, and by the way, security operations really kind of parallels quite a bit security and risk management as well as asset security. So you'll see some overlap in that domain from the first two domains. And then if we get to it, uh, the software development and security concept. Software development's not really covered that much on the exam, that's domain number eight. Um, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, try to get into it uh, as part of the process. Okay, so what do you do after the CISSP? Well, you have a whole lot of different options. And I'm not gonna read through all these different options. These are all additional certifications that ISC Squared provides um, for information assurance. Um, and there are other certifications that are valuable, I believe. I think uh, the CAS uh, Plus and the CASP, uh, uh, the Security Practitioner uh, Certification from CompTIA uh, is pretty good, uh, although it's not nearly as in-depth as CISSP if you want a kind of a more well-rounded uh, certification profile, you can look at that certification as well. All right, so that's the introduction. Let's go ahead and get started into our first domain. <laughs> 